Good day my YouTube family and friends. This is Pamela Stevenson coming to you from Holistic Health. Welcome if this is your first time and if you've been before, I am so glad to have you back. Now for our nutritional news flash. This is macaroni cheese that was made with not our usual cheese. Um, it was kind of a little bit surprising because normally the cheese that we use, it would melt and this one didn't so it definitely gave a different texture different flavor we, we decided to do a test and on trying to burn it 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 wouldn't melt and we thought it would have at least melted basically anything that you put in your body that that cannot be digested or that for example as in the case of cheese cannot melt then you have to question should you really be eating it should it be going into your body we decided to do another test as my gas ran out on the first test and please excuse the state of my cooker we had just had dinner um, but what we found was on trying to to burn it to see whether or not it would melt it wasn't melting all it did was it burnt and it gave off such an unpleasant odor now i would imagine that something given off that kind of an odor would make you question is this food is it real cheese but apparently it is real cheese but it's not the kind of cheese that I would consume. So basically, I, I am just making you aware of what exists out there. There are all types of cheese. Please check them. Check that it's the one that you need. It obviously was not the one for us. It was not the one that you would use for macaroni cheese. Because it certainly did not give the texture that we wanted. So check before you buy. Um, if you're not sure of something, then just buy a little bit and try it. And if it doesn't work for you, then go for something else. And that's the advice that I can give. Now on to social distancing again. I spoke about it in my last episode regarding the beach. Now I'm taking you to Soho, London. But this time the distancing is a lot worse as you can see in the picture. Which by the way looks like sardines in a can. It was taken on the very first Saturday that lockdown was lifted with the pubs and the bars all opening. People totally forgot about social distancing and what concerns me is the fact that pubs and bars are allowed to open where you know social distancing is not going to be practiced and our church buildings remain empty because of the stipulations that has been placed on our leaders. For example, being told we cannot sing, which makes up 50 to 60% of our services, defeats the object of having a service. We have adhered to the governmental guidelines regarding the two metre distancing which they have constantly reminded us about and we've prepared our churches with the necessary equipment ready for opening only to be let down by the government that we cannot sing. I was led to believe that if you are two metres away and especially wearing a mask you were at a safe distance from catching the coronavirus from somebody else. The question is are we being led a merry tale? Think about that. And that's the end of my nutrition news flash. Now to continue with the topic of vitamin A. Remember we were going through the benefits of vitamin A. So now we're going to continue. Okay. 
how much vitamin A do we need? In general, 800 MCG is classed as an average intake. MCG stands for micrograms. But if we're being specific, the recommended daily amount for vitamin A for a 19 to 50 year old, for a male it's 700 MCG and for a woman it's 600 MCG. Always take vitamin A supplements with food and a little fat in the diet aids absorption. Vitamin E and zinc help to help the body to use vitamin A which also helps with absorption from and from food. So as you can see, all the vitamins are all interlinked and in some cases you cannot use, use one without another, which is why I normally promote taking a good multivitamin so you are not lacking in any area. I do believe in a holistic approach rather than just dealing with the problem and not getting to the root cause of the problem. I had years of suffering as a result of doctors only dealing with the problem and not getting to the root cause of what was causing the problem. <clears throat> now here's a part where you can make changes to your diet if you has or haven't already done so. What do you find vitamin A in? <clears throat> Supplemental forms are capsule, liquid, soft gel or tablet form as I showed you before which comes in this and just reminding you yes so I'm just reminding you here I don't normally store them in this clear glass jar it's normally kept in this because that protects the vitamins it protects the vitamins from the sunlight Okay, to continue, the foods you are likely to find it in are all yellow fruits and vegetables. You'll find it in yellow apples, yellow figs, yellow lemon, yellow kiwi, yellow pears, yellow pineapple, yellow watermelon, which are just some of what you can see in the picture that's showing. Please note that some of the fruit and vegetables give a different nutrient value depending on the colour. For example, a banana, when it is green, it is mostly known for its iron content. But when it goes yellow, it is known for its potassium content. So the chemical structure changes. Vitamin A is also in whole milk, milk products and egg yolks. It's found in spinach, dark green colored fruits and vegetables. Please note that spinach is now known to have the second highest levels of pesticides on it. So I would not recommend it. As an alternative, maybe something like callaloo would be better. Facts and tips. Vitamin A is best taken in the form of beta carotene. You cannot overdose on the beta carotene form, which is a precursor of vitamin A. If you eat carotenoid rich fruits and vegetables such as apricots, cantaloupes, melons or leafy greens. However, that can change if you eat a lot of oily fish or liver. Otherwise, the body makes only as much as it needs but be careful when taking a supplement. Just take the recommended dose and do not go for the store brands as you can end up overdosing on them as they can be quite toxic. Please note that it's no longer advisable to eat liver as all the toxins from the animal is stored there and you don't want to take it on. So, that's all for today. I hope you also found this session just as informative as others. There wasn't enough time to touch on arthritis as I did say that I will touch on arthritis. So I am hoping to cover that in the next episode. So please like, subscribe and share with as many people as possible because if you don't need the information, somebody else might. And remember to hit that notification bell if you want to know when the next episode is out. So goodbye and God bless. Bye.